In today's video, we're going to talk about who has the best oil impulse driver. Oil impulse impact drivers are intended to drive small to medium sized fasteners like sheet metal screws all the way up to say a three inch deck screw. The big advantage to these tools is that they are significantly quieter than a traditional impact driver, making them better suited for use in occupied spaces like office buildings, uh, homes, hospitals, and obviously better on our hearing. Oil impulse drivers, they offer three important factors. First of all, they are way quieter to use. Second, they're smoother performance. And what I mean by that is there's less vibration. And then lastly is there is increased durability by minimizing the, and reducing the metal on metal contact inside the tool, the actual anvil hitting the mechanism. Oil impulse drivers also cut down the noise intensity as much as 50% as well as reduce that vibration like I talked about. And, and that actually results in a smoother feeling tool to use. In fact, I noticed how smooth the tool was before I actually noticed the difference. So the question is, what's the difference? What, what is an oil impulse driver? A regular impact driver is different from oil impulse and basically it's, it's all in how it applies its force. Regular impact drivers create force through um, a spinning anvil and hammer mechanism. The hammer mechanism, it compresses a spring and when released, the energy drives the hammer down while simultaneously twisting and creating kind of this concussion, concussive force. The loud chattering, that, 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 that sound that you hear is created by metal on metal parts slamming against each other. This type of mechanism also creates vibration. An oil impulse impact driver utilizes oil to hydraulically drive the impact me mechanism for reduced noise. It has a completely different impact me mechanism and it's very similar to, uh, equated to a vehicle clutch. Two blades basically are held by an anvil and, and they're enclosed in this cavity containing viscous oil, which hydraulically forces the two blades to make contact by spinning uh, in an outer case or a hammer. As these components engage and disengage, they hold the impact longer than a traditional impact. And that results in a quieter application as well as a longer sustained torque with less vibration. So in our lineup, in our head-to-head, -head, we looked at three tools. We looked at Makita, Milwaukee, and Rigid. And for testing, we put them through uh, fastener testing, driving tasks. Um, we also looked at um, we looked at a couple of different things. We wanted to cover the tasks that they were they were set up for, but we also wanted to see if they could push the limits a little bit with some timber locks and see if they could stand up to a more demanding task. We looked at features. We looked at price, ergonomics, decibels, speed application, and power. So let's talk about features. In the features category, Makita won. In this features evaluation, we looked at seven different categories. The first was the reverse switch, the forward reverse switch. All the tools obviously locate them in the same spot, but they're not all equal. The Milwaukee reverse switch was better than the rest. Milwaukee switch was the only one that actually recesses in and seats flush with the impact housing. The crew liked this because it didn't stick out and kind of rub against the web of the palm of the, of the hand and that could cause irritation over time. Um, we looked at speed selector switches. Makita has an LED array and it's easier to see. It's an electronic button and it's off to the side and, and why is this important? It actually allows the user to see what you're selecting while you're pushing the, it's a really nice positive switch while you're selecting through the switch. Milwaukee has a switch as well but you have to reach over what you're trying to see to activate the button. And then lastly, Rigid has an electromagnetic switch, one, two, three, up on top of the unit. Uh, all three tools have battery gauges. We looked at them. The Makita battery gauge stayed on the longest of the three and was the brightest and easiest to see. The LED on the Makita is located on the back side of the battery. So you can view the, the gauge on the back side. And the team unanimous, unanimously agreed that this is the best location. Uh, LED lighting on the tool, work lighting. <clears throat> Rigid has three LED lights around the collet, completely illuminating the work area with no shadows. This is also, there's also a switch on the handle of the Rigid which activates the LED separate from a tool trigger. Makita and Milwaukee both have single LED lights located above um, the trigger and it's actu actuated by the trigger. Um, 
the, these lights created kind of a little bit of an annoying fastener shadow. All three tools can activate the LED by pulling the trigger and stay on uh, a little bit longer after the trigger is pulled. And we timed them, they're all around 10 seconds. Rigid, like I said, has that second switch, so you can just turn the light on, you don't have to pull the trigger. Um, all three impacts have a collet that allows one-handed loading, so you just take the fastener and pop it right in. Milwaukee's collet seemed to be more durable, solid, and had a tighter uh, tolerance, kind of a stronger spring. It also had a more aggressive knurling, which would be better with gloves. The Rigid has a smooth finish, and it makes for slippery and difficult to use with or without gloves. Your hands are a little wet or slippery. Uh, both Makita and Milwaukee tools also come with a special feature for driving small fasteners, like self-tapping screws. On the Makita, they call it a T-mode, and on the Milwaukee, they call it a self-tapping screw mode. These modes, uh, they basically start off in a high speed, and as the electronics in the tool sense when that screw grabs, it slows down to drive the screw to prevent stripping. Kind of backs off a little bit, so you don't strip the screw. The really great feature um, of this is that it's great for guys that are working with sheet metal screws. Mechanical guys, electricians, plumbers, um, really nice stuff. But neither the Makita nor the Milwaukee stripped one fastener during our testing, not one. The Rigid doesn't have this feature, unfortunately. And during our testing, it stripped two out of 10 fasteners when driving at high speed. Uh, we looked at ergonomics. The winner of ergonomics was Makita, again. We looked at 13 aspects of these tools to determine the winner of ergonomics. And we looked at everything from tool weight to quality and usability of the LED lights. When it came uh, down to choosing a winner, Makita's got this lightweight platform, right? So it has a lightweight, well thought out controls, features, we especially like the Makita's three-speed selector with quick shift mode. Boom, boom, boom. That's that switch I was telling you about, which controls the fastening speed and application. The Milwaukee finished second in ergonomics, placing um, and placed second in several other categories as well, standing out with uh, the easiest to use and least obstructed forward reverse switch, um, a tight, really tight fit and finish, uh, easy to use call it, best of call it of all three tools. And then lastly, the Rigid. The Rigid stood out with the triple LEDs just behind um, and evenly spaced around the collet. Um, the Rigid, however, has a smooth and slippery collet. It's heavier than the other two and larger. its larger size kept it in the back of the pack. Rigid is noticeably larger than the other two impacts. And this is based on two reasons. First of all, Rigid utilizes what's called an old, it's an older impulse or impact technology, which requires an impact, a larger impact mechanism. Second, Rigid resigned or designed their impact driver to handle larger size fasteners and have higher torque. Both Makita and Milwaukee are the smaller size impacts and are optimized for smaller to medium size fasteners. The trade-off is Rigid is a larger tool and it has more reactionary torque. Interesting fact, Milwaukee first started off using the larger impact technology like Rigid and later abandoned it after seeing what Mil uh, Makita came out with, the Makita technology. It's fair to say that Milwaukee's design was inspired by Makita who paved the way on this. Uh, let's talk about price. Everybody looks at price. It's it's important factor. And the winner was Milwaukee. Surprising, but we included in the chart pricing at the time of this video. The lowest price isn't always the best in our opinion. We're always looking for best value. Our theory is that these impacts are so close in performance that the highest price tool does not always mean it's the best tool. And the same goes for the lowest price tool. It's a, it's a fact that if a lesser price tool can solve the same problem and do the same job, I'm saying that's better. So it's always hard to compare pricing of these cordless tools, especially when each manufacturer is packaging them different. Makita sells for $331. $172 is a bare tool, $159 with a, a charger and battery combo. Rigid was $279. They have $199 as a kit. Comes with two, two amp hour batteries, charger and a soft case. And you gotta pay $75 for a five amp hour pack. Milwaukee is 329, and that offers a kit with two 5 amp hour batteries. So 
while rigid is cheaper, you'd have to buy three battery packs <laughs> to, to compare um, and a couple of them are small slim packs. Milwaukee's only $55 more and you get those two five amp hour packs. We think we'd rather have two large packs than two small ones and a large. You know, it doesn't make sense to us. So we think that Milwaukee is the best price and value, especially when it comes to the hard case as well. Uh, testing procedures. So before we describe the test that we conducted, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about sound level test procedures. As you know, sound management and reporting is a highly precise and scientific process. A difference in an additional 10 decibels actually doubles that sound energy. Manufacturers test and report sound readings in specialized chambers. They're called anechoic chambers. And they use multiple high precision uh, microphones. They place them uh, all around the test area in the tool. And they record the sound carefully in these controlled conditions under very strict test procedures. And that basically yields a precise and accurate sound value on the tool. The manufacturer's published sound levels are absolutely accurate. However, the sound intensity levels will not be those that the user, you guys, will encounter out in the field. Users hear sound reflections from and, 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 and ver reverberations, walls, ceilings, hard surfaces, ambient noise, other tools that are working on. So the, the crew had, um, has many times said that we're not a testing lab, nor are we trying to be one. We use commercially, commercially available, high quality testing equipment for our measurements. We attempt to keep our measurements and our testing consistent, and more importantly, reliable and repeatable. We urge you guys to focus on the relative values of our test results. And we, this is due to other factors. You know, you're gonna note that our sound results are going to be different. They don't track the same as the manufacturer's published sound readings. And that's based on our consistent testing, relative differences in the tool performance to the comparison tests. All, all three tests were done here in the shop and it is what it is. It's how we recorded it. So we tested everything with a five amp hour battery. We looked, the first test we did, we wanted a common test for impact drivers, uh, driving into framing lumber. So we simulated a test driving six three inch GRK construction screws. And we did that into two layers of two by six lumber. We timed the results and we placed a decibel meter 12 inches in front of the tool, wherever it was. And we recorded the peak sound energy. We would repeat this test and we calculate the average runtime for uh, two sets of six runs, right? So highest peak sound value. And we set all the drivers on high RPM settings. So for this test, Rigid was the quietest, Milwaukee was the fastest. Um, we then we looked at, at T, uh, tech, TEK fasteners in steel hat, uh, steel hat channel. Um, it's another popular application for, um, for impact drivers, and it's basically self-tapping metal screws. So we installed these self-tappers and we drove them into the steel hat channel. Um, we drove six fasteners similar to the other test. We timed the test and we recorded the peak sound levels. For this test, the imp impact drivers were again set at their highest RPM settings. And in this test, the Makita was both the quietest and the fastest. Uh, the last test we did, performance testing, was timber locks. And we wanted to see if it could perform in, uh, timber locks into LVLs. You know, um, manufacturers position these oil drivers as quieter, gentler impact drivers that are best suited for occupied spaces. But these tours, because they have less torque, uh, than a traditional impact, we still want to see if we could use them in occupied spaces in headers. So uh, we, we picked an LVL and, and we figured that you're going to run into headers in remodeling projects in occupied spaces. So we wanted to see how well these three drivers worked in a heavier load, in a heavier task. We drove four five inch timber locks into two LVL pieces. We did them several times, recorded the results, took the average. Um, measured the peak sound measurement from a foot away from the tool. And again, all three drivers were again placed in their highest settings. The result, Rigid was the fastest, Makita was the quietest. So the winner, overall winner of this performance speed test was the Rigid. Our first impression when we used this tool was how smooth it was. Um, they're all smooth when you use them. Um, it's quiet and you only notice this when we actually tested it 
later side by side with a standard impact. We used the Milwaukee 2753 model. Um, I do want to stress again that, that these oil impulse drivers, they are for smaller to medium sized fasteners. And, you know, I'm talking small to medium sized lags, maybe six, maybe eight inches long. If you need to do hard joint fasteners like lug nuts or really heavy duty flanges on water pipes, sprinkler pipes, stuff like that, you're better suited using an impact wrench. Um, the Rigid Stealth, it demonstrated the most power and was the fastest driving impact driver. It performed almost equal to the Milwaukee standard impact, almost. Uh, and we verified that by running them side by side. Uh, I was impressed with the Rigid's power. The only trade-off is that it has a fair amount of reactionary torque, which can be fatiguing over time. Um, when we did the performance test and we looked at the decibels, the winner of that was the Makita. OSHA defines safe noise levels. Uh, they say you need air protection basically at 85 decibels or above. The, the defining feature of these oil impulse drivers is how quiet they are comparing to irregular impacts. Makita averages 90.5 decibels across all three tests. Rigid was 90.9, Milwaukee was 94.7. Makita was the quietest impact driver. Its impact mechanism actually sounds softer than any of the others when it gets. And no, if you increase 10 decibels, that's almost doubling your noise level. So that represents a hundred times more sound intensity. The average sound readings for an oil impulse driver are somewhere around 92 decibels. The average uh, was seven decibels less than a standard impact driver at 99.8. So when we talk about finding the winner, these tests are done in a limited scope, guys. We're not a testing facility. I've said that, right? We can't possibly test every application you want to see. Sorry. Um, all three of these impact drivers have been in service for a year with our crew. We have all three of them running. And all three of them are working flawless. There are no negative issues. There's been no mechanical issues, no maintenance issues. Makita and Milwaukee have been designed. They are just sweet spot for HVAC, electrical, and plumbing trades. Uh, perfect for small to medium fasteners, both in a compact size and very to little no uh, vibration. So if we have to tell you, if we pick the best oil impulse driver, Makita gets it. And again, these were close evaluations. Makita took the win by winning the ergonomics, the features, and the noise. Makita is an innovator a leader in oil pulse technology and their oil pulse technology changes the game in fasting when you think about speed, the power, and the noise and the ergonomics that they perform. Um, all three combined is a winning recipe for Makita. The Makita also has what they call XPT, it's extreme, um, extreme protection technology and that means that the tool was designed for increased dust and water resistance for operation in hard job site operations. They actually have a water chamber they show this stuff in. Um, my final thoughts on this whole thing are that oil impulse drivers are best suited for tasks and workplaces where precision and low noise are more important than having maximum power. For many users, the decision really is that which one you should buy is probably based on your platform that you own. That makes the most sense to me personally. The bottom line is this, all three of these oil impact drivers, they're capable of performing all the medium driving tasks that we put them through. For larger fastening, they will perform the application, but they're gonna have less torque and they're gonna be slower. Ultimately, everybody needs to choose a tool that is best on your specific needs, uses, and budget. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing, and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We have four different channels. We have Concord Carpenter and Toolbox Buzz, Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you at the next review. Take care.